Good morning and welcome to Chat for a Chat. Uh, today we're joined by two-time Olympian Yana Pittman, who is also striving to represent Australia in bobsleigh at the Winter Olympics in Sochi, Russia in 2014. We've also got with us school students from Newington Public School um, in New South Wales and students from California Gully in Victoria. So welcome students. Would you like to give Yana a big cheer? <laughs> That's lovely. <laughs> let's get straight away. Under, let's get underway straight away. Um, Yana, I might just invite you to spend a couple of minutes um, giving us an update on where you're at with your training and your competition um, since the last time we spoke in August. And then we'll move to questions. Um, California Gully, you can ask your questions first, and then we'll move to Newington Public School. So, um, Yana, over to you. Thanks, Francis. Well, um, so I used to obviously do athletics and the training there was very different, but for the last couple of months we've really transferred into bobsled. So a lot of you guys have probably done athletics at school, yes? Yes! So you know exactly what athletics is like, but do you guys know a lot about bobsled? Can you tell me anything about bobsled? Do you know what it is? Sort of. Anyone want to say? How heavy do you reckon the bobsled is? So it's a big giant tube that you slide down in on ice. And how 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 heavy do you reckon it is? Really? Ten kilos. How much? Ten kilos. Okay, it's, a, it's over two hundred kilos. So it's almost. Oh, that is And you're basically driving down an ice hill. So a couple of months ago, we started, or actually almost a year ago now, I swapped into bobsled and uh, really wanted to have a crack at the Winter Olympics. So I've been to a couple of summer Olympics. Really loved them. And uh, I think it's been really a great experience to be able to be involved in, in both winter and summer Olympic Games. And you know, it's about four months away now. So we have been doing lots and lots of training. We do a lot of weightlifting and a lot of running on the track. And I've just come back from a few weeks ago where we actually practice on ice. Um, and you know, the, the tracks at the moment are very a little bit dangerous because there's lots of crashes happening because it's very early in the season. So in some ways, I'm lucky to be back here in Australia while everybody else is testing out the ice before anything um, before we get over there. So it's an amazing sport. We go up to about 140 kilometres an hour. So if you watch your mum and dad's cars that go to about 100 kilometres an hour, we go about one and a half times that. So it's very, very fast and you have to hold on very, very tight and you go around lots of really, really, really sharp corners and, uh, and you hold on and hope that uh, nothing goes wrong. So... Maybe we'll ask some questions, Francis, because I don't really know what these guys want to know. Hi, I'm James. Um, how hard is it to push a bobsled with the pilot in it? <laughs> well, when you first start the race, both of you are pushing together. So I'm at the back, and my pilot's on the on the left hand side, uh, the right hand yeah, the left hand side, and basically she starts as well, and she jumps in. But by then the sled's already moving, so when I'm pushing by myself, she's uh, she's already sort of got in and the, and the sled's already up and running. So it's very technical, but um, it's a lot of fun and it goes really, really, really fast. So to, to do. Hi, I'm Riley. Is it more competitive? Is it more competitive in hurdles or bobsleigh? Probably hurdles because, as I was saying before, you guys have all done athletics, yes, and a lot of schools all around the world do athletics. So there's probably more people involved in athletics in the world, whereas in bobsled, I don't know, I don't know if many other Australians would have even tried bobsled, so there'd be only maybe 20 or 30 people in the whole of Australia that have done it before, so it's probably a lot more competitive in athletics, but it's a lot harder in bobsled because you don't have the equipment in Australia, we don't even have an ice hill, so you have to fly overseas to do all the training, whereas obviously there's, you've probably seen an athletics track on your way driving to school, they're quite regular in, in, in Australia, we love our athletics, like swimming I guess. Hi, I'm Shayla. Hi, Shayla. Um, what made you change from hurdles to bobsled? Okay, so how old are you guys, roughly? 10 to 12. 10 to 12. 10 to 12. All right, well, exactly when I was your age, so about 12 years old. Um, I, I just started athletics, and I trained with another girl out at Narrabee in New South Wales. Her name was Astrid, and we were both doing athletics. And um, a few months ago, she actually rang me and said, I've changed to bobsled. So a few years ago, actually, almost a year and a half ago now, she rang me and said, I've changed to bobsled. Would you think about doing it as well? And initially, I was like, oh, no, I don't know. It's very different from athletics and it's very scary and it's very cold over there. And I don't like the cold very much. 
But um, then she, the fact that we'd run together when we were kids, so that I knew her for so long, and I knew she desperately needed help to get someone really big and strong in the back, uh, she basically convinced me. She said, come over and have a go. So I got to fly on a big plane to Europe, and straight off the plane, she put me in the back of the sled, and we thundered down the hill. I almost vomited at the bottom and never wanted to go again, but soon got over that fear, and, uh, and it became my sport. And now I have muscles three times the size that I used to have when I was in athletics. So it's quite, it is quite different. Hi, my name is Zach. What was it like the first time you ever did bobsledding? <laughs> uh, the very first time, try and think of the scariest thing you've ever done, like if you've been skateboarding or if you've been on a really scary ride, like a like a... One land or where they have one land now, do they? So, like in Brisbane, maybe if you went to the Gold, to the Gold Coast or one of the to, um, what are they called, Movie World or something, and times it by two because it basically rattles. So it feels like you're in a giant washing machine going boom, 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 and it's going faster than any car you've probably ever been in. So it was it was quite scary, um, but I also knew that it was something that gave me an opportunity to go to the Olympics again for my third Olympics and and, and a Winter Olympics. So I guess. You just knew the bigger picture and you thought about, right now I might not enjoy it, but in a few months' time I would. And within probably two or three runs, I thought it was the best thing I'd ever done. Yeah, and I'm just going to interrupt and welcome students from Rockhampton Girls Grammar. Hi, welcome, guys. Welcome, Rockhampton. And before we have our next question from California Gully, I might just invite Yana just to speak a little bit more closely to the microphone so our school who's using Adobe Connect can hear you. If you wouldn't mind. Thanks, Yana. Yeah, it's quite an interesting setup where I am, so can you hear me now? Yeah, just that. Yeah, that's great. Okay, okay California Valley. Um, hi, I'm Tyson. Is it hard to break in a bobsled? Is it hard to what, sorry? Break. Oh, break, yes, it's really hard. Look at you, I probably can't see, can you see how big my biceps are? Whoa. <laughs> for a girl, like if you were a boy, you'd be pretty happy with them, but for a girl, it means I don't fit girls' clothes. I have to go to the men's section and find shirts that fit me. But it's basically oh. because you have to pull so hard on the brakes. So you push like this really hard, and then you have to, at the very end of the race, so you can imagine, like I said before, your car is going like 150 kilometres an hour and there's no brake like in the car, it's you. So you basically have to push your feet into the ground and pull these little metal things and these tiny little teeth sit into the ice and pull and break it on the track. So it's all done by you. There's no like electronic brakes like in the car. So it's very, very hard. Hi, my name's Tisha. Have you ever fell out of um, a bobsled? Yes, on my fourth ever run, I was just starting to enjoy it and relax and think, oh, this is a great sport and it's really fun. And then we were going around the corner and it was going, so when you're in a bobsled, you hear it, it's like a shh, really noisy. And when, and when you're about to crash, it goes completely silent. So we're going shh, and then it went shh. I had no idea what happened it was my first time. And then it would be completely smashed and then you slide for about a kilometre. So if you think about an athletics track, so it's got two laps, you just slide all the way on your side with your head on the ice. But guess what I broke? Can anyone think of what I broke? Collarbone. Cut it? Collarbone. No, yeah. I broke a fingernail. A tiny little <laughs> fingernail. That was it. So I have no ball wounds, nothing to show my grandkids, absolutely nothing. <laughs> I was a bit disappointed. I wanted at least a Never scar, I can say. Because I'm a six-year-old boy, and I wanted to go home and show my son that I had a mark, but I had nothing. So it, because you get quite protected by the big sled that you're in, even though it looks a bit dangerous, it's more the, the fear of it than the actual, like there's nothing really goes wrong these days. Hi, I'm Eve. What could happen if you went too slow on the bobsled? That's a really good question. I've not been asked that one before. But if you go too slow, normally the sled will just continue down the track. So even if you don't push very fast at the top, like sometimes when you're first starting, you can kind of just gently push it off the edge. But because the, slack, the, the track is sloped down, it'll get all the way to the bottom. Um, but if, for example, you break too early, so you, you, you before the finishing line, you might get stuck in the bottom of a hill before it comes up the other side, and then you'll have to push it all the way up the hill by yourself. And that's not fun. Not a 200, you know, 200, 300 kilo sled pushing them up a hill is, is not a good idea. 
Hi, uh, my name's Greg. Does it get squishy in the bobsled? It's a bit squishy, but it's more really bumpy. Like, there's no nice padding and cushioning like in a car. It's pretty much just metal, and you come out like with the first, a couple of the first runs I came down, I came out and had a complete bruised beard. So I, looked, I totally looked like a boy. I had these like black lines down the side of my mouth because your head hit the side of the, the sled so much that it bruised on your helmet. So I was walking around like I had a moustache and a beard and all it was was a bruise. So it's not particularly comfortable. Um, so instead of being squishy, it's probably quite almost a bit unsquishy. Like there's too much room and you whack around too much. So this year I'm going to go and ask my the guy who made our sled to put all nice padding in the back so that it's a nice comfortable ride. Hi. Hi. What would happen if you crashed the bobsled in the middle of a race? That would unfortunately be the end of your competition. So if you crash in a race, that basically means you come last. So unfortunately it does happen sometimes. So at the last um, Olympics, two, two, two sleds crashed in the final. In fact, one of the ones who was supposed to win actually crashed. So it, it, it certainly um, it gives Australia a better opportunity because we don't crash very often because my pilot, her name is Astrid, she's very, very experienced. Um, and she's an excellent, excellent pilot, so it certainly means that we have a lot less chance of that happening. And if someone does crash in front of you, that means you move up in position. But unfortunately for the person that did crash, that would be the end of their Olympics. Hi, I'm Mitch. Hi, Mitch. Fastest ever record you've done on the bobsled? Uh, the fastest we've done was 142 kilometres an hour in, in a place called St. Moritz in, Sw in Switzerland. So that's the fastest track. Um, some of the boys definitely get up higher than that because they have four men in the sled, so they push it faster and it's just a heavier sled. But for us, last year, that was the quickest we went. I might invite one more question from California Gully and then we'll ask the students from Rockhampton Grammar to ask some of their questions. Okay. We, we, think, we think you've answered all our questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Alright, girls from Rockhampton Grammar. Do you have some questions for Priyana Pittman? Oh, I can't hear them, Francis. I can't hear them. I don't know if their mic's working. I don't know if it's working for you and it's not coming through to me. So I can't hear any noise from their room at all. I'm the same, same as you, Yana. We can't hear you, Rockhampton. Have you turned on your microphone? Oh, do you know when the next Winter Olympics are? Yeah, just spell it out. Spell it out. Uh, February next year. Wow, you do know. And what other sports are you going to be watching? Can anybody do a couple of Olympic sports at the Winter Olympics? Yes, just spell them out. Oh. Curling, yep. Yeah. What else is there? Ski jumping. Yep. Yeah. Alpine skiing. Yep. Yeah. Ice skating. Have you got them on the wall somewhere? No. no. <laughs> Ice skating. Ice skating. Yeah. Snowboarding. Snowboarding. And who's our really who's an Australian really good snowboarder? Oh. Fina. I don't remember. Fina. Don't know. Well, what about what about um oh. aerial skier? Do anyone know who a really good Australian oh. aerial skier is? Oh, now it's in my tongue. Oh. Yeah, yeah, lovely. We have quite a few actually in Australia, but mm. no. We've got Lydia Lassell and Elisa Camplin. Got Tora oh. Bright. You guys know her? Yeah. 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 These are all guys that have won Olympic medals before, so they'll be going for another, having trying to get a second or third one for this Olympics. Mm. It's pretty exciting. Yeah. 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 So, you know, the, the, the size of the whole Winter Olympic team is actually smaller than the, the track and field team at the Summer Olympics. So it's the, the actual Winter Olympic team is about, I don't know, one eighth of the size of the Olympic normal, normal Summer Olympics. So it's a smaller team, but they get a lot of medals for the small team.
Yeah. Have we got any audio yet? Okay. Let's try with Rockhampton. Can you hear us, Rockhampton girls? Well, let's. I don't think it's working. <laughs> well, just try to find for any other questions or? Yeah, I've got a question for you, Yana. So I've got a question from Newton Public School. What is your goal for the Olympics in 2014? Thanks, Newton. I'm about five minutes away from you at the moment because I'm at Homebush. Um, our goal for the Olympics would probably to, uh, to come top eight or top six, depending on uh, the next few weeks. So we don't really set an Olympic goal till probably three weeks before the Olympics when we've seen all the other races that we've done. So we have eight races before the Olympic Games, and the first one starts in a month. So I missed the first one because I'm actually studying to be a doctor, and I have exams to sit. So those exams are finished in the middle of November, and then we fly over to Europe and start sliding. So I actually fly to America initially. Um, and we have eight races as qualification for the Olympic Games. So at the moment we're aiming for top eight, but hopefully we can progress that to top six depending on our results over the next few months. I've got another question from Rockhampton Girls Grammar. What was it like at your first Olympic Games and what was it like to win an Olympic medal? So my first Olympic Games I was five years older than you guys. So I went to my first Olympics when I, I qualified for my first Olympics when I was 16, and that was actually Sydney at the in here in uh, in Australia in Newington, so or Homebush, which is very close, and it was incredible. I felt I was very young. I was still at school, and um, it was it was just a huge big event, and there was thousands and thousands of people everywhere. And I remember standing at the starting line, and they announced that an Australian was racing, and it almost made me deaf with the, how much the the crowd yelled in your in your ears and try to support you and it was absolutely incredible and I was very lucky to, to experience that again at Commonwealth Games in Melbourne in 2006 and then everybody in the stadium knew you so I had 93,000 people in there shouting your name and that was absolutely incredible so winning world championships and things like that is is amazing um, because they play the Australian anthem at the end of the race and you get given a beautiful medal that you can have forever um, you have to certainly hope that you know your anthem words because uh, everyone has a camera right in your face and they watch you while you're singing and they watch you as you do a lap around the track and you get to high five people around the track so it's it's quite an amazing experience and then uh, you come home and you get to meet lots of people and do media things and be on TV so it's a lot of fun if you uh, if you get to the top level. Thanks, Yana. I've got another question from Newington Public. Their question is, who are your major rivals for the Winter Olympics in bobsleigh? Okay, that's a good question. So the best teams in the world are actually the Germans, the Americans and the Canadians. So the last Olympics was in Canada and the Canadians actually won the gold medal. Um, this, time it's, this time it's in Russia, so certainly the Russians will have a big advantage because it's in their hometown. And that means they get to train on that track all the time. So the track is very, every track you go to is different. The corners are in different spots, the speeds are different, the curves are different. And they've obviously had a lot of time to practice on that. So I'd probably say those four teams are the top teams. But you know, we're a little country from Australia. We, we don't have the experience, but I think that we're still a we're an underdog, which would make us you know put us in a really good position because they're not sort of aware that we're up and coming yet. I've got another question from Rockhampton. What do you find more difficult, bobsleigh or the 400 meter hurdles, and why? 400 hurdles is way, way, way harder. Um, bobsled is more fun. Um, it's really, it's like a very enjoyable. The training is equally hard, but um, I don't know if you guys like throwing up very much. But unfortunately, when I was at 400 meters, that's what happened fairly regularly. It was almost once or twice a week because the body just can't handle some of the training levels that you do. So I certainly don't encourage you guys to do that for now. Maybe when you're a bit older. Um, but it was also just the fact that it was just it was a difficult event to do, and I got injured a lot. So. I've asked this question a few times before. Does anyone want to guess how many needles I had in me to try and fix me with injuries when I was a track athlete? So before I started bobsled. Have a guess. Yep, you can shout it out. Yeah, about five, five, nine, five, eight, eight, four. Keep going. Up, keep going up. Under. Under. Keep going. Twenty-one. Seventy-nine. Nah. Okay, keep going up. Jump up in hundreds, maybe. It might help. <laughs> 
546 needles I had during my athletics career trying to fix, fix injuries. I had 13 operations, so I'm covered in scars all over the back of my legs, and I had, I think we calculated I had 56 MRIs, so that's when you go into a scan and they have a look to try and find where your injury is. And since I've started bobsleigh, I've had one. One scan and one needle. So that's the difference. Ooh, Helen's got bells going. Yeah, so I find bob sleds a lot easier on the body and uh, it's certainly much nicer in your head because you're not injured and it feels fun. So it's it's been a, it's been fantastic. I really love it. I've got another question from Rockhampton Girls. Are you lonely when you go and live overseas? <laughs> That's a nice question. Um, I do get lonely because you know, you, I, well, most of the time I travel with my son, so my six-year-old gets to come with me, but only on school holidays, obviously, because he has to go to school holidays. So I, have, I go away from him for two weeks at the end of the year, and then two weeks when he goes back to school, which is a little bit hard. I do miss him a lot. Um, but that, I guess, is one other thing I love about Bob's sled is because there's always two of us in the sled, so that I'm never by myself. I'm always with her. Whereas in athletics, very often you would be in a hotel by yourself, you'd fly by yourself, you'd race by yourself, and uh, and that could certainly be lonely. But now it's a lot better. <laughs> okay, let me see if we've got any more questions from Newington Public School. Um, and so I think in some ways you get a really good opportunity to show how great Australia can be in a sport that you wouldn't think we could even do. So some of you or your mums and dads may have seen the and just on that, do you expect there to be a lot of support for the Australian team in Sochi? Uh, do a lot of people travel over to cheer you on? In the audience, I think people resonate with the fact that they know that there wouldn't be a lot of support. And a lot of the other countries are really supportive of us as well because they know that we've done it tough and that it's not a natural sport for Australians. So I think, I think yes, I think quite a few people will travel over. And also because of the other sports. At the Olympic Games, you're going to be able to go to a lot of different events. And because they know Australia has a good chance in a lot of other a lot of the other events to get medals, hopefully they'll come across to ours as well. Okay, I've got one last question, and this might be timely. It's from um, Rockhampton Girls Grammar. How busy is your schedule right now? Bye bye. See you later. Thanks, Francis. All right. Thanks, Yana. Bye. Bye, bye everyone. Bye. <laughs>